What if you could stop time? Let's find out. But first, let's relive our worst breakups. This is Susie, Ben's girlfriend, and she's really letting loose on this poor lad. As Ben's heart is being crushed before his very eyes, he recalls the holidays they took, the time they spent, and the lamp they bought from Ikea. Just look at the craftsmanship on that thing. Oh, by the way, you should know he's an art student attending his final year at college. A few weeks later, Ben spots Susie with a new man already. This causes him to ponder, what is love, and can it really be so fleeting? I'm afraid you're going to have to get used to this sort of thing happening, Ben. Then, he chats with his childhood friend, Sean. He's sort of a ladies' man. The man never misses. It's true. Ask your mom. <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. During art class, Ben has a new subject to paint. Excuse me. A hefty old man with a lot to share with the class. Though, even with the specimen before him, Ben's mind wanders back to love. Instead of painting the man, he turns his sights to one of the pretty art students and has a go at her instead. Don't you think you should show him a little bit of respect? Yeah, come on, Ben. Later, alone in his dorm, we learn that Ben was the one that broke up with Susie. During their argument, he realized that he just couldn't make her happy and lost all hope. Feeling regretful, Ben rings her up, practically begging for another chance. Not a good look. I'm sorry, Ben, but it's over. I'm with Steve now. Have you... you know? Yes. Uh, uh. After the call, a feeling of emptiness overcomes Ben as he sinks back into bed in a brilliantly executed transition. He overlooks his pictures with Susie, reliving the memories before contemplating setting them ablaze. Though, he's just not ready to let go just yet. Relatable. We learn that following the breakup, Ben lost his ability to sleep. Completely. Wanting nothing more than for time to drift by, Ben is instead cursed with the opposite. The days become never-ending and he's acutely aware of every passing second. While the majority of his newfound time is spent thinking of Susie, he does catch up on a lot of movies. One day on the bus, he even contemplates writing about them. Eventually, this idea blossoms into a successful movie recap YouTube channel. But even that was not enough to get her out of his mind. And as she bounces around, I can see why. In all seriousness, he does absolutely nothing until one night at a grocery store he runs into what I'm guessing will be his next love interest. While paying for some snacks, Ben realizes he's broke. Fortunately, it looks like they're hiring. Ben applies for a nice staff position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like that, Ben now has something to do with all his extra time. One day, he runs into the girl again, Sharon. She's late. As she departs, Mr. Jenkins has a little word with her. Saucy. You know, our college has really prepared Ben for this job. He's able to see the beauties where others cannot. Well, don't just stare at it, eat it. Before Ben can get to that, his gaze is stolen by a beautiful woman. You see, Ben's always wanted to be a painter, and what better subject than the gloriousness of the female form? I'll tell ya, the male form. As time passes on, Ben reflects on the different ways to avoid it, time that is. Sharon, for example, keeps her watch covered and recoils at even the sight of a clock. On the other hand, Matt and Barry prefer something a little more exciting, scooter races. That works too. Before Ben reveals his trick, we learn that he hasn't slept in two weeks. Susie continues to invade his thoughts and he's lost all sense of time. The line between imaginary and reality is beginning to blur. So how does he make time go faster? By doing the opposite, stopping it. What to do in this frozen world? Study female anatomy, of course. With the world on pause, it becomes very easy to understand the concept of beauty. A concept he first encountered as a child when his parents had a foreign exchange student living with them. She was a fine piece of Swedish engineering. We'll call her Ikea. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to imagine the rest of her, but Ben did not have such restrictions. The memory stayed with him for a lifetime, and now in the present, he finally has the opportunity to capture such a beauty. He savors every moment with the women of the store, detailing every texture, bump, and curve with immaculate artistry. Before finishing up, he's sure to place Mr. Jenkins in the most wonderful of places. With the crack of his knuckles, the flow of time is restored. Some time elapses, and the store gets a new employee, Brian. He's something of a kung fu master. Yeah, right. Let's see your moves. Okay, grab my hand. <laughs> got him. In the locker room, a famished Sharon spots Ben's juicy meat, sandwich, and requests a bite. Though, it leaves a little mess on her face. Ben helps her wipe it off, and she walks away. However, Ben wishes to savor the moment. See, I knew she'd be the next love interest. He manages to slow, but not stop time, which confirms that simping is too powerful for even time control to contain. He cherishes the moments as long as they last, but things are about to go belly up for Ben. After walking out, he's brutally ambushed by Matt. Hey buddy, guess who just asked Sharon out? <laughs> Oh no, this can't be happening. This prompts Ben to reflect on the duality of the word crush. His first crush was a girl in his class who broke her arm. After her cast came off, she was cursed with monkey-like hair. The students teased her endlessly, but not Ben. He comforted her. Oh, also want to be my girlfriend? Okay. And with that, his first crush became something more. One day, she asks him for a kiss, but as she puckers up, he walks away. I gotta go. I'll kiss you tomorrow. Based. Little man is a chad. Sadly, the following day she went missing. Apparently, her parents decided to move to America last minute. Crushing. We cut to Ben sharing with Sean that he fancies his co-worker, but it appears he's already been swept up by Matt, though he assures him that all hope is not lost. And I listened to him. 
He is a dating expert after all. Classic move. Back at work, Bossman schedules a soccer match with the competing supermarket owner. Then, we catch back up with the boys in the locker room, where we see Matt gloating about his night with Sharon. It was way better than with my uncle. Wait, what? Moving on. At the game, it's immediately clear that they're bound to get stopped. And they do. Oof, a little late on that time stop. Ben decides to wander off while contemplating living the rest of his life like this. Then he grabs a drink and... Oh crap. How safe really is this frozen world of his anyways? Ben investigates the source of the sound, as all white people do in horror scenes, and... Whoa, is this turning into a horror movie? Never mind, back to romance. Ben resumes time and grabs a bite with Sharon after the game. Are you and Matt really going at it? What? No. He said that? Yeah, he did. Honestly, did anyone really believe that dude was with her? I think not. The pair proceed to get to know each other a little better. Like Ben, Sharon had a bad breakup somewhat recently. Then, they share their passions with each other. Sharon wants to travel to South America to be a teacher, and Ben of course wishes to be a painter. Ooh, paint me like one of your French girls. Okay, she didn't exactly say that, but the sentiment isn't too far off. Afterwards, Ben drops her off and they share a kiss. Sort of. He did his best, and that's all that matters. Let's check in with Mr. Jenkins. I'm feeling good. Oh, this? Just a fashion statement. In fact, he's feeling so good he's gonna throw a party. Sharon shares the news with Ben and invites him as her date while telling off Matt in Spanish. In the days leading up to the party, Ben and Sharon's romance continues to blossom. At last, his curse has been lifted and he can finally sleep. A whole day of sleeping later and Ben is awakened by a call that's about to change his life. Hi, my name is Alex Proud. I run the Proud Gallery. I saw your work at the university and would like to arrange a showing. Oh my god, thank you. No thank you, Ben. You're the talent. Okay, this is amongst the most cruel tricks you can play on someone. Yes, it's even worse than the way I'd be clickbaiting people. Moving on, we're treated to a short montage of everyone getting ready for the party. Nothing unusual here. At last, the night is upon us. Ben picks up Sharon and the pair meet Sean and his girl for the evening. If he can make it that long. Suddenly, a familiar face walks over. It's Susie, and turns out the guy she's dating is Mr. Jenkins' younger brother. Let's check in on Sean. Alrighty then. Some time elapses, and Mr. Jenkins is seen hitting on Sharon while Susie corners Ben upstairs. I really feel bad about the way things ended. Meanwhile, Sharon goes off to look for Ben, and finds him. No. Cut, Ben, can we get a little more emotion on that line? No! Brilliant. With time stopped, he soon realizes how screwed he is. Not knowing what to do, he just sits there and contemplates for two whole last days. Eventually, enough is enough. He hits play, and the rambunctious party resumes. Though, before Ben has a chance to say anything, Sharon's already out the door. He later stops by her place to try and set things straight, but she refuses to listen to reason, opting to make angry woman noises instead. I hate when that happens. Well, at least you got that art thing. Oh, right. Ben stops by and meets with Alex, who quickly dismisses the notion of an employment. However, just as Ben is about to walk off, Alex takes a peek at his work. Okay, there's some good shit. Bring me some more. Fast forward a few weeks, and your boy's got his very own art show. Though they haven't spoken in a minute, Ben extends an invitation to Sharon. She pulls up and finds that the art adorning the walls is of her. With such a grand romantic gesture, Sharon has no choice but to melt in Ben's arms. They share a... Then, he stops time, but this time, he brings her along. They step outside and embrace in a frozen wonderland of snow. And at no point is she like, how the shit is this happening? Anyway, moral of the story, love is confusing and you're better off not being a simp. What is up, Jake Pollers? Sorry for the delay in, uh, in video. Um, just been dealing with some stuff. I think I'm also a little bit under the weather. Uh, but we're going to be right back to it. Going to see if I can get some help with the channel as far as writing and editing because it's basically just been me for four months and it's been a wild ride and it's it's only natural for there to be a crash so yeah guys i hope everyone's doing well 